Hey mommy, if you'd like to know how I get this everyday look, regardless if I am going to take my daughter to the park, if I have a Zoom meeting, if I'm just kicking back in a t-shirt, this is how I do my everyday quick mommy makeup look. So if that's something you are interested in, then just keep watching. Hi mommies, how are you doing? Hope everybody finds themselves well today. We are diving into my quick and easy glam mommy makeup tutorial. And as always, before any makeup application, we start off with skincare. The skincare that I use and I've been using for as long as I can remember is Avon. I love their a new line and now it's even more moisturizing and rich than before. It just really works for my skin, which tends to be a little dry. I absolutely love this moisturizer and eye cream. I like to go in and do a little massage as I tend to wake up a little bit swollen I also drink lots of water as I get ready. I find it's the perfect opportunity since I am standing there in front of a mirror. I just have my big jug of water and I am chugging away as I get ready. So the next thing I like to apply after my moisturizer is a dewy foundation. Right now I'm just using the Wet n Wild photo focus foundation but honestly whatever foundation or bb cream you are comfortable with using that is what i'm for this isn't necessarily a tutorial to let you know exactly what products work best i know we all have different wants and needs when it comes to our makeup and how we look so this is just showing you how i apply my products I usually just apply a good amount to my face. I either rub it in with my finger a little bit or with a foundation brush. And then I always, always go in and use my beauty blender to just blend that all into my skin. I do like a more natural finish on my skin. So I just blend until I'm able to achieve that look. As you can see, I am just going in and applying that all over my face, covering above my eyes, in the upper eyelid, under eyelid area, basically everywhere just to get an even application. I also bring the sponge down very little down my neck just to make sure I don't have any lines of where the foundation ends. This is very close to my skin color, so hopefully I don't get much of that look. I am fairly fair and pale, even though it is summertime and I try to get outside and get some sun every day, but my face is usually covered. The next thing I like to go in and do is use an eye concealer under my eyes. So I do use a small amount, rub that in my in between my index fingers and just apply it covering the areas concentrating the center of my face to bring some brightness and also I do have some puffiness under there which tends to go down a little bit as the day goes and I get my hydration in. I also like to bring this up to my eyelids. This works as my eyeshadow primer since I typically don't use a primer. Now I just want to make sure I am tapping until everything is evenly blended into my skin. And I find that with the heat of my fingers and the heat of my skin, it does blend in fairly well. If needed, I will go in with the Beauty Blender and blend it a little bit more but i find that with my fingers it's usually pretty good 
Next, we are warming up the face. Your girl needs a little bit of color. And that is a bronzer that I no longer have any more of, which is a sign of a good product, I guess. But really, any bronzer that you like using on your face will do. I get a brush and apply it above my cheekbones. I am not trying to chisel my face or contour. This is really just to warm up the face, give it some life. I don't want to look ghostly. Uh, that's just a preference of mine, but you can do as you'd like. I like just warming up the cheeks and I go down a little bit on my neck. As you saw, I applied some on my forehead and my nose just to kind of give it the look of bronze or like I've been in the sun. As you can see with everything that I apply, I really try and blend it out, make sure it blends into my skin and there are no harsh lines of makeup. It's all just kind of meshing together with the foundation, this bronzer, I will do the same thing afterwards when applying my blush. And like all the other products with blush, you can go in, I'm currently using this Hot Mama blush because hey, why not? We all want to be hot mamas, I think. So I just go in warming up the face, applying it above where I applied the bronzer. Uh, also touch the nose up a little bit with it. It just gives me some color. It makes me happy. I've been doing my makeup this way for years. It may not be the most current way of doing makeup, but hey, I'm old and therefore the makeup I apply might be a little old school. All good here, right? So the next thing I like to do is apply a highlight. This is an old highlighter I've had forever. The Amrizi Anastasia Beverly Hills highlight. As I mentioned, any highlight you like will work great. I love the effect of it once it kind of melts into my skin. It just gives me this glowing natural effect. I will be right back. My daughter needs me. And as we know, when a daughter is calling, you must go. So I am back. She had a little mini emergency. I'll show you what happened there. She was eating some oatmeal. She spilled some on the floor. It was a crisis for her. I had her sitting in my bedroom watching something as I got ready and filmed this video. So of course I needed to clean it up right away just as she asked me to. <laughs> you know how that is. I'm picking up the oatmeal, all is well. She could continue watching her cartoons and we are back. Now the next thing are my eyebrows. Sadly, years of over tweezing my eyebrows to be the thinnest, archiest eyebrows possible back in the day have left me with this and by this, I mean something very tragic where I no longer grow my hair. My eyebrows are just poor things. They just, they need a moment. I use this e.l.f. brow gel to kind of freeze them. I think it's called e.l.f. brow freeze actually. And this holds them in place. It's basically a gel for an a maximum hold gel for your eyebrows. Now this holds them in place. I brush them up with the gel, with the product. They look a little bit crazy at first, but like with all things, we must trust the process. I brush them up to the gods. They stay sticking up like this for a little while. Once the gel has kind of set in, then I like to go back in with the spoolie and shape them to the shape that I once had. I do have quite a few gaps and the power of makeup is where I am able to fill in those gaps 
to make it appear as though I have a full bushy set of eyebrows, or at least I think that's the appearance that they give. You tell me. Uh, so as you can see, I am still brushing, working the hair, working the hair, hoping that one day my eyebrows may grow back. If you guys have any tips on any products you've used that any serums, any vitamins you take that help or that you have found that helped you, please let me know because your girl can use some help in the growing eyebrow hair department. So once that is set, I just kind of let them dry a little bit. And I was getting hot, y'all. When I tell you, I was sweating. So I like to get my beauty blender and just kind of blend the areas where I have the most little sweat beads. And that just helps the makeup mesh nicely with your oils and natural sweat, I guess. Next, I apply a naturally, natural-ish looking eyeshadow. I just go on my crease and above. I find that that gives me the most natural look, just kind of an overall bronzy look. I go up pretty high, as you can see. You'll be able to see it closer once I fill in my eyebrows. But don't be afraid to go up, up the crease a little bit. And I also like to blend it out on the edges, bringing it towards the hairline. That just gives a nice effect on my particular eye shape. It's kind of what works for me. I guess uh, you can find your own way of applying that wing section. If this technique works for you, then please, by all means, try it out for yourself. The next thing I do is take some type of bronzy skin toned, tan skin toned eyeshadow. This one is Honey Lust by MAC Cosmetics. And I like to apply it with a small brush just on my eyelid. Ever so slightly, I just go in and it gives this really nice iridescent bronzy finish which is just something I have found that really helps your eyes not look as tired and heaven only knows us moms can use a non-tired look every once in a while so I like to just apply this over my eyelids the next thing of course is curling the lashes you could either curl to your heart's content or skip this altogether and apply the mascara. I do find the look of curled lashes does help my eyes kind of brighten up and look more awake. Does make a big difference for me, so I like to curl them. I just go in a couple of times and press. This is... Um, something I've been doing for years. It does not mess up your lashes if done properly. And any mascara of your choice will do. I am currently using the L'Oreal Feather Lash, I believe. And I just go in and apply mascara as one normally does without trying to look too odd in front of the camera. But I just go in let that dry a little bit. This is a waterproof formula. I should add that because I tend to get runny eye makeup anytime I apply mascara that is not waterproof. I tend to get kind of a dark area right under my eye and it just drives me nuts. So I've found that with waterproof mascara that does not happen. With the same color I used along my crease, I am now going under my eyes and applying it on my lower lash line. I do not apply mascara on the lower lash line because I have that problem with the runny mascara, but if that works for you, it does look beautiful. So I find that with the eyeshadow under 
the lash line, it just kind of pulls it all together for me. Uh, but I do also like how the eye looks without any eyeshadow under there. And I'm just going back and applying a little bit more concentrated areas on top of my eyelid. I just like the effect it gives when the crease is a little bit on the darker side. Next, we are going in to fill in the eyebrows. I have been using the color Brune by MAC Cosmetics. It is the closest I have found to my natural eyebrow color without it looking too witchy. If you have dark eyebrows, dark hair, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you go in with a black color, I mean, you can't help but look like Elvira. It really does make that much of a difference just using a slightly lighter shade of dark brown. So I have found this one to be the closest to my eyebrow color. I apply it with the flat angled brush. This is from MAC. It is so old. I honestly don't even know if they carry this same one. I'm sure they have some type of equivalent to this, uh, maybe a different color. I don't know, but this is the brush I've been using for years. I initially go in and line the base of the eyebrow where my eyebrow hair used to grow just to create that initial shape. And then I go in and as you see, going upwards with the brush, kind of stroking the brush upward as the hair grows up. And this just makes it look a little bit more on the natural side because I am going for more of a full, natural, bushier brow. So I really do like to work in sections. And here I noticed that I still had a little bit of a bald section where there was no hair growth. So I'm going in with a little bit more color just to blend that in. And if you use any type of brow gel, you'll see that it helps keep the hair in place. So now I'm getting close to the final steps. I sometimes go in with a setting spray. I don't always do this. I'd say I do this, I don't know, one out of five times I do my makeup. But it was there today and this is a complete look. So I thought I'd share that with you. I'm using the setting spray by NYX in the dewy finish. And this would be a complete look if you're not a falsy lash girl. But if you are, hey, 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 welcome. If you are, then go ahead and pick your favorite strip lashes. I am using the Ardell Wispies with my duo invisible glue that I just find so much easier to apply than the tube. I needed some caffeine. Oh, this ember mug is just heaven sent. Keeps your beverage hot for an indescribable amount of time. If you're a mom, you need that in your life. Please add it to your wish list immediately. Ember. Ember mug. All right. So I love to just go in with a tweezer. I look down a little bit at my handheld mirror and apply the lashes as close to my lash line as humanly possible. If you do this pressing motion, you press your eyebrow, your eyelash, pardon me, eyelash as close to your eyelash as possible. And you just kind of work around until it looks natural and it is closely fitted to your natural eyelashes. I usually go in and I apply the left lash first just because that does tend to be the hardest one for me. And 
then I go in and I'm right-handed. So when I apply the right lash, for some reason, that application just always seems to be easier for me. Now I'm doing the pinching motion here with the tweezer instead of with my fingers, but I would recommend the finger pressing together uh, just to not have you pinch your eyelid because if you've ever done that, you know how much that hurts and I wouldn't want to wish that pain on anybody. So I just go in and work the lash. I mean, I am a seasoned falsy applicator, but there are times where even I struggle or I don't love the way they turn out. So I just kind of tend to wiggle and keep working them until I like the result. And right now it seems like they are both evenly applied. And this is the look I'm going for. Please let me know if you mamas enjoyed this type of video, this type of tutorial. I just wanted to provide it for a couple of requests that I received as far as an everyday makeup look. This is my everyday makeup look, which might be a bit of too glam for some moms, but it does work for me. If you can comment down below let me know if you enjoyed i hope this helped and if you go out and try this look let me know how it was for you until next time mama take care bye